welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Hey. Yes. <laughs> yes. We did it. <laughs> Damn it. We did it. Oh, we always joke about the amount of slight te- technical glitches that we have <laughs> yeah. right before recording. And the, what the joke is that we're never doing anything differently. We've been using the same microphones mm-hmm. for the past two years, the same. Well, now you have a new camera, but like the same cameras, mm-hmm. the same setup, the same garage band. But for some reason... It never works perfectly. No, like, like my computer loves to wrong. forget my AirPods so they don't want to connect and stuff like right. that. It's just like, come right. on, I'm just trying to do something a little <laughs> a little different today, but it's the same. No, no, no. Uh, okay, today's going to be a good episode because we're doing a little bit of a fun, well, because of lots of things, because we're going <laughs> to have fun. Uh, we have some fun reading updates, but also because last week, Raylene quizzed me she tested me Mm. on whether or not i actually knew animal farm as well as i thought i did (laughs) and it was very anxiety producing but i ended up getting a 10 out of 10 on the quiz of are these animal farm quotes or not and we realized this week we should definitely be doing a follow-up of gatsby edition for (sighs) raylene i'm scared So I, this week, put together the quiz of 10 quotations on what, like, some of them are Gatsby, some of them are not not Gatsby, and Raylene is going to guess. Um, So we're going to do that later on. First, we're going to do our usual little catch up and and reading updates. So Raylene, that was just a little teaser trailer, Raylene, (laughs) to keep the the people coming. Yeah, just put the fear in my heart early on so that I can (laughs) think about it the whole time. Yeah, you uh, start sweating. Yeah, and I promise I didn't like study up on Gatsby or anything. I haven't like flipped through the book. I haven't gone online to look up quotes to try and prepare for this. Like I'm trying to go based off fully off of my real knowledge. Which is not going to like be a that, lot. I like that. Because I also was not yeah, able you had no to idea. prep at all. <laughs> yeah. So I, I followed through with that and was like, no, that would be cheating. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, Raylene, how's your week been over there? What's It feels like it hasn't been that long, right? Because it we hasn't. recorded on only a couple nights ago for <laughs> last week's episode. Yeah. Although I did do something kind of fun between then and now. Mm. Um it's more Stardew related stuff, but this is bringing Stardew into real life, out of the computer oh. into my life. So, what? yeah, I know this is going to sounds crazy, but it's totally normal. One of my friends got the Stardew Valley board game for Christmas and okay. we've been wanting to play it ever since yes. she got it. But okay. it's this like very complicated game. Like it, she said it took her an hour, over an hour to set it up the first time she did it. So she was like, oh, this oh, wow. is like a big undertaking. So we need to like yeah. dedicate an entire night to this. So we got a whole night together where we're like, all right, let's all hang out. And yep. we wanted to make Stardew Valley food because we always do that when we do Stardew themed nights. So I made roasted hazelnuts. One of my friends made a tropical <laughs> curry and the other friend made oh. chocolate cake. So those Fantastic. are three pretty... Pretty awesome uh, recipes from Stardew. So we made that. Iconic items. We sat down and we played the game. And when I say this is the most complicated game of all time, that is an <laughs> understatement. This game is insane. There's like 10 different types of cards. And then okay. there's like, and you barely ever use any of them. Like we flipped over one <laughs> from each, maybe the whole game. So it's kind of like this game could go I on for hours and I hours and this. hours. Like it's more complicated than Monopoly. It's more complicated, it's more complicated than, than anything. The actual video game. Oh is yeah, what I've heard. because yeah. <laughs> what they did is take, try to take every single element that they possibly could from the game and put it into a board game. This is a video game that takes like a hundred hours to play through. So right. trying to condense that into a board game while also yikes. like using all the same elements. <gasps> Big yikes. It's a little much. And it was so okay. confusing, like, because you're yeah. you're farming and there's, like, things that you have to do to, like, water your crops. And then there's things that you have to do to, like, build barns. And then you can go fishing mm-hmm. and you can go to the mines. And, like, it's insane. It's mm-hmm. truly insane. But it was lots of fun. Like, after playing it for three hours, we totally didn't beat the game because there was no <laughs> way. We only got partway through the summer wow. season like you're supposed to play a whole year basically of the game oh um and we just couldn't get through it but we've started to grasp like what the basics of the game are so next time we yeah. play it'll make a little bit more sense 
But my God, that game is crazy. So like, I, I have heard this. I want to I recommend it, but this. I also kind of don't because it's like, yeah. I'd rather just play the video game. Like if I had to recommend one thing, I'd say just do that. Yeah. But if you love Stardew and want a little extra, then the board game is a good time. But like be prepared okay. to dedicate many, many hours to it. I think that's really interesting because I've heard like when I heard that they were making a Stardew Valley board game, mm -hmm. I was so excited and I looked up reviews and stuff when it came, like when it started to come out because it sold out so quickly. Yes. Yeah, um, I initially, that. I think it's a lot more available now, but um, I then started looking up reviews of it and people were like, this game is really complicated mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's really like, yeah, just confusing and if, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how much people actually ended up liking it as a board game. Um, I think like really board gamey people liked it. Like people yes. who like have the because it's a challenge and it's yeah. You have to yeah. be able to quickly understand a lot of different things that are th being thrown at you. Like it's not a simple game where you just like go around a board and yeah. you know pick up items. Like you choose where you go and you have a certain amount of actions that you can do each time. You can get right. coins, you can get these little heart tokens, you can get yeah. so many different things. And so it's just like a lot for your brain. And one my one friend who is very much a board game person like watched videos in advance and she was the one kind of like Smart. in charge of the, yeah. the instructions while we were playing. Yeah. And even totally. she was like, this is crazy. Like she was like having a hard time. <laughs> we were like, it's yeah. okay. Just keep it up. You're doing great. And um, yeah. So yeah, you have okay, to be yeah. pretty smart to be able to grasp it quickly, I think. And wow, it was, it was tough, but it was lots of fun. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Over, over here in Ariel land, um, I've mainly just been like trying to catch up with work. Cause obviously I went to New York for a weekend and yeah. stuff. And um, that kind of put me behind. I, I, definitely have this thing where when i come back from a trip there's then two days of like recovery time <laughs> yeah where i'm like very slow and lazy and like trying to just like like right now literally mountains of laundry that we've mm. been doing and we spent a like day doing meal prep so much chili making i chopped so many vegetables yeah. yesterday so just like all of this like catch up um but the other huge thing is the electrician did i talk about this last i don't week? think you did no okay I so i know up. i did on my ch on my youtube channel so i was like i don't remember where the heck i've talked about this but basically exciting big huge news I have an electrician beginning the process of rewiring my entire oh home. My God. Yeah. And so it's going to be a process like room by room. And I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, we're just kind of tackling it. But upstairs in three rooms, mm -hmm. we now have modern grounded <laughs> plugs. <laughs> wow. Modern. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> so um on the days when the electrician is here i'm like really following him around and like answering a lot of questions but also assisting mm -hmm. um as much as i can and also part of that is like he asked me he's like do you want me to clean up my mess afterwards oh. of which i would have to pay him oh obviously <laughs> like obviously right yeah. like he's for his hours of his time I guess, yeah um, or he's like, or I'm going to leave a mess and you clean it up. And I'm like, I will clean it up because I don't, I'd rather just yeah. pay myself or not pay or just not pay and do it myself. I yeah. mean, um, so that's another big thing. Like every day when the electrician leaves, he leaves a giant mess. <laughs> it's not like unreasonable in any way. He does kind of tidy up behind himself as he goes, but like mountains of like insulation oh, were left okay. over and that i just have to like put into garbage bags and um stuff like a lot of plaster mainly like mm. dust and debris and everything and i'm just, You're like, just like sweeping up sadly at the end of each day <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's so funny because it's so like yay he did it and he's gone and that was great but then i'm like oh no i have to spend like an hour <laughs> vacuuming and mopping just to like get all the dust gone because yeah. obviously there's a lot of like cutting holes into walls and stuff <sighs> anyways it's completely <laughs> worth it and yeah. i know that it's gonna be good and i'm like really excited about it and um i was i was texting cj my brother who edits the pod i was texting cj and i was like oh my god look at this like i sent him a photo of our first modern plug and i was like it's all <laughs> happening and it, it's really exciting and he was like i think it's so good that you 
are enjoying the structural part. Yeah. Because he was like, because a lot of people get frustrated at that. It's just like money, a lot of money, and you don't really see the fun parts of it. Yeah, it's not as fun as painting. (laughs) Exactly. And he texted me. He said, I think you see it like Animal Crossing. (gasps) And I was like, I do. I really, really do. Where it's like, you have to just get a bunch of sticks before you can do the fun thing. Or yeah, like give all true. of this boring stuff to Tom Nook and then you get the house upgrade yeah. and get to do the fun stuff. Um, so it's like grinding in a video game. So I love that. Anyways, that's like my big life upgrade over here. This big electrical thing is going mm-hmm. on and it's really good. But, you know, do you know how much laborious. longer it's going to take? It's tricky because basically he... Um, like the other day he was like i'm really sorry i can't come on monday the food bank got its new refrigerator and if i don't fix that their food's gonna go bad uh, i was like well clearly the food yeah, bank takes priority that. and then another day he was like i'm really sorry i can't come because the old folks home near where we live uh they got like a new food cart thing and they have to upgrade it or else blah 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 i was like help the elderly (laughs) help the elderly it's okay so that's taking a while just kind of and then we've also been having a lot of snow and that uh, has been a little bit of a thing where we're just like stay home it's okay yeah so that's dragging things out but it should only be another like two days and the upstairs should be completely done nice and then we're taking a break while i remove the walls in the kitchen and then we can do the kitchen and you do more of the downstairs yes. so oh, that's exciting yeah it's gonna be kind of going for many months but the big thing is finishing the upstairs yeah and then that will be totally upgraded which is super oh that's sick yeah <laughs> uh but now let's talk about what reading have we shoved in amongst the other things we've been doing mm. Raylene, what have you been reading what do you want to review? What's going on over there? Yeah, well, so the one book that I read was The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada and translated by David Boyd. The Factory was published in 2013 in Japan, with the English edition to be published in 2019 by New Directions. Oyamada won the Shinsho Prize for New Writers for The Factory, which was drawn from her experiences working as a temp at a car company. David Boyd's other translation works include Breasts and Eggs by Mieko Kawakami and Diary of a Void by Emi Yagi. So yeah, this book was, I mean, it surprisingly took me a little bit longer to read than I thought it would, being that it's like 100 pages long. But as I mentioned before, I was really obsessed with Stardew last week, so that (laughs) is what happened. Um, But I really enjoyed the book. Like, I don't know. Did you like it more or less or the same as the whole? I knew you were going to ask that. That was going to be my next thing. (laughs) I think I might. I actually really don't know, because while I was reading it, my my instinct was I liked the whole better. But after finishing this one, I feel like this one kind of like had more to say than the whole mm, so i feel that's like interesting. yeah i feel like the whole was more enjoyable just like as a reading experience but this one i think is a better book um if that makes sense so that is interesting yeah yeah so i really really liked it it has a lot of similar vibes from lots of the books that we enjoy reading where it's like uh very mundane like you're just getting the mm. mundanity of people working but it, this one also has a spooky kind of ominous undertone as well like i mm. mentioned in the last episode there's one part where one of the characters finds out that he has to live at the factory that he's working at and nobody told him in advance <laughs> and he's just like you know, they're just like yeah you're moving in come here and then he just has to move in and so there's just like little events like that that are kind of spooky and you're like what is going on but i really liked um like what the book kind of had to say about work culture and like corporate culture Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. there's three characters in the book but oftentimes you don't really realize who's talking until they say what kind of job they're doing which is kind of creepy so it's like that's their whole identity and they kind of you know overlap each other sometimes and there are moments where like the way it's written is super creepy in that you think a chapter like it's the day ends and then it kind of just goes into the next without even like taking a break and so it just feels like it's a never-ending cycle of work and Mm. this is all the people do it's all they think about they don't really have you know things that they do or think about outside of the factory oh so it's yeah it's it's a really good vibe of like just creepy but also makes you think about your real life where it's like yeah every day i go to work and then i go home i spend like two or three hours doing whatever and then i go to sleep and then i wake up and go to work Mm. again and um yeah Yeah. so it's it's creepy in a real life kind of way but i really liked it so i think you should read it soon i think you should keep reading it 
Um, <sighs> so yeah, Sick. so that's that. Really glad I finally read that. And now I'm reading We Spread by Ian Reed. Mm. This one has, can you hear that? That's some ASMR <laughs> yeah. for you. You can tell, you can tell how the cover feels. <laughs> Um, I just started this one yesterday when we were doing our live show with our patrons that we do at the beginning of every month. And you, as well as the patrons, helped me pick this for my first, yes. for my read of the month, which is really nice. And I am now on like page 74. And okay, yeah. it's a really quick read. And I barely read mm. at all yesterday. Like this was me sitting down for like half an hour to read. Mm. And um, so far I'm enjoying it. It hasn't had a lot going on yet. And I don't know if it's going to top... I'm thinking of ending things or foe yet. It'll have to like okay. really pull some punches in order to do that. But basically it's about this old woman who lives by herself in an apartment. She's lived there for like 25, 30 years. And then suddenly at the beginning of the book, she kind of starts to like hear these voices through the wall okay. on the other side of her wall. And she's like, oh, that's strange. I didn't think anybody lived there. Whatever, goes to sleep. And then she keeps hearing the voices. And then she has a fall and hits her head. And oh. then all of a sudden, these people are packing up her apartment and moving her into an assisted living facility. And she's like, what's going on? I never agreed to this. Like, where are you taking me? I just want to stay in my apartment. I'm fine. And right. but then they start saying things to her like, oh, you planned this. Like, this is something that you <gasps> you wanted to do. And so it's oh. kind of spooky because you don't know if they're uh -huh. telling the truth or not. And yeah. you're just reading it from this woman's perspective. So you have no frame of reference of like, you know, is she losing her memories or is she being oh gaslit God. by these random people? <laughs> like, who knows? So it's it's creepy in a good way. It's like a, a low-key thriller. And before I started reading it, I kept thinking of um, Death in Her Hands as another, like, book that was kind yeah. of not similar to this, but another book about an older woman. And so far, I'm an liking this way better. An older woman whose memory is confused. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So far, like, I'm already just in the very first little bit of this. It's already better than Death in Her Hands. So I could definitely <laughs> say that for, okay, for yeah. the reading experience. So, yeah. That's all I've got going on right now. Oh, that's interesting, though. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. I similar to you. Like, it feels that like we just recorded, so I don't <laughs> have that much progress to yeah. talk about. But I do have some stuff. So, first of all, I did get a new book. Mm -hmm. Tiny Hall, mm -hmm. One Book Hall. I got Closer Baby Closer, Poems by Savannah Brown. Ooh. So this is Savannah Brown's newest poetry collection. Had to get it. Had to support Savannah. Mm -hmm. um, I She did sign it. I think she probably signs all of them, but she did sign it's it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Savannah is such an interesting online situation. Just like she started... You know, like we all did mm. in the early 2010s yep. doing YouTube videos. But she she almost I think she almost instantly was doing like spoken word stuff. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then she moved into doing music stuff. And she it's just kind of like like everyone was just doing general different kinds of videos. Um, and then she's kind of really stopped making videos. Um, she releases them every once in a while. But her main thing is writing. She has two YA books that are out. And then this is her third um, poetry collection. I remember her first poetry collection when it came out, Graffiti. Um, it came out when she was 18. And wow. honestly, mind-blowing. Like, it is <laughs> so, so, so good. Um, and so it's exciting that she's now... I don't know how old she... I want to say she's like 24, 25 now. Okay. Um, and so I'm excited to read what her writing is like in her mid twenties, mm -hmm. right? Like w now that she's like a proper adult, what is she? What is she writing about, etc.? Um, it says moths, ex lovers, Jeff Bezos, and other supernatural creatures <laughs> flit through the pages. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. the other really interesting thing about this one is that it's published by Doomsday Press, oh. which is Savannah Savannah's new publishing press. Oh, she that's started very her own cool. press. Wow. Yeah, that is cool. So she started her own press and um, is publishing like alternative poetry and I think other stuff coming soon. Um, yeah. But this is like their first thing that they've published. So that is that's awesome. very neat. Had to get myself that one. Support the old internet peeps. For sure. Okay. As for what I'm reading, things got interesting. So <laughs> Last week, I mentioned that I was going to ask Raylene to pick my next book. Mm. And I was going to send you a clip. In fact, I just sent you a photo. Yeah. Because I didn't feel didn't like speaking that day. <laughs> <laughs> 
But in the photo, I I uh, took a photo. Yeah, I took this photo and I sent it to Raylene, and it included these books. These were the options Raylene had to pick from: "Breasts and Eggs" by Miyako Kawakami, "In the Margins" by Elena Ferrante, "Next Year for Sure" by Zoe Lay Peterson, "Briefly a Delicious Life" by Nell Stevens, "Untold Night and Day" by Bay Swa. Let Me Tell You What I Mean by Joan Didion mm. and Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler and Meyer Coleman. Raylene, can you guess what these books have in common? Um, <laughs> like well, what this pick, what this haul was? How did I pick this pile? How did you pick that pile? I mean, I know a few of them are books that you are that you started but haven't finished. A couple yeah. of them are writing books. And then we've got Why We Broke Up, which is an old favorite. So I actually have no idea what kind of connects all of them besides those three categories (laughs) the thing that connects them all is that they were all available on my library i didn't even think of that so i could read them on my e-reader gotcha i (laughs) see my beloved (laughs) e-reader so yeah i was looking through the library and i was seeing like what books were available and these were all available and i was interested in all of them like i was like i could read that next for sure yeah um i also put holds on a lot of things yeah that's Um, fun stuff but yeah, stuff. I sent these to Raylene, and Raylene picked "In the Margins" by Elena Ferrante mm. because she thought it would be funny. You thought it would be funny if I keep reading books, <laughs> uh, keep writing memoirs about writing by authors who I haven't read any of their yeah. other books. Yeah, that's I your that's cinematic universe. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so I got it on my e-reader. It says I'm 16 percent of the way through, um, so I really have barely mm. dug in. Um, Here's an interesting thing. So far, don't like Elena Ferrante's writing style. Yikes. It's kind of snooty. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if her fiction is like that, too. I know. Because if I it is, I'm know. definitely not going to like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I just find it really, um, not, uh, yeah, just kind of a little, uh, it's a little bit of a more pretentious thing. Here, let me f- try and find, okay. Later, I studied Gaspera Stampa more systematically, but at the time, as you see, that declaration in the first line struck me immediately. Like, can you already kind of feel <laughs> just from those two lines? It's just yeah. a little like, I feel so detached from it. So I definitely want to read it. And the the you know how the e-reader does the thing where it tells you um, how much longer you have yeah, left in yeah. the book? Because it's such a short book, it says I have 55 minutes to oh go. Oh my gosh, so, so you could do it. the whole thing was like an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes, I want to say. That's pretty um, awesome. So I I'm definitely going to push through. Yeah, I wish I could find out that information on every book that I'm reading physically. Like, just tell me how much, how many hours are how left. How long is this going to I really want to know, because I that's really useful to me. <laughs> I know. I love that info. Um, But then the other thing that I'm reading that happened completely by accident, but I want to just forge ahead and finish it. So yesterday, Raylene and I recorded um, our live show. So we have a Patreon. That's our main way of supporting the podcast. We have a Patreon. And every month we do a live show, which is a lot of fun. It's like an hour and a half long. We hang out with peeps, Mm -hmm. Q&A it up, do some reading (laughs) sprints. So on one of these reading sprints we were doing, the first one, I started with this book because it's what I'm reading. And I just found myself reading the same paragraph over and over (laughs) and over and over again. Like I couldn't, it couldn't sink into my melon. I was like, what (laughs) what am I reading? Like it's a little, it's a little academic and it's a very particular vibe that Elena Elena is going for. Mm -hmm. And I was like not able to read it while also being on the live show at the same time. Like my brain was like freaking out. (laughs) So I just looked around my desk and I saw that I had this on my desk my desk <laughs> the end of green gables <laughs> manga um does it say who even did this I feel like that's so doesn't... random i love that that was just there and you're like <gasps> <gasps> panic this give me just... a hand <laughs> what do i read yeah <laughs> oh yeah okay on the back it says art by kuma chen story adaptation by crystal s chen um and lettering by daria rhodes so Yeah, this is the manga adaptation of Anne of Green Gables. It is so unbelievably sweet and cute and happy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, it just feels utterly perfect. I can't even explain how cute it is. Um, At the beginning, there's a foreword, like a very short, it's like two paragraphs, Mm. a foreword. 
by Kate McDonald Butler, who is Lucy Mon Montgomery's granddaughter. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It says, it starts, I grew up with great pride in my grandmother's achievements, and I continue to honor her remarkable legacy. Anne of Green Gables has been in print continuously over, for over 112 years. It has been translated into over 34 languages around the world. It's been adapted for musical... Um, and she like brags a bit more and then she says and now a brand new manga comic I think my grandmother would be delighted to learn that her most famous novel has now crossed into another genre and will be available to a whole new audience um, and then it goes from there but I think that's so nice like her is granddaughter nice. is like the owners of the estate yeah. I have heard that the, the owners of the Anne of Green Gables estate are very intense. Oh. Like, they don't allow authorized things very often. Oh, okay. And it, like, even at the top of this, it says, the only authorized <laughs> manga adaptation by the heirs of Ella Oh, my Mon God. <laughs> yeah, so dramatic. Like, I know, that's so much drama. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, but it is really fun, and I am really enjoying it. So I do hope um, by next week... That I will have finished those two mm -hmm. because even though the manga looks kind of long, it's so easy to read. Like yeah. it's, it just flies through. That's so the best stuff. All right, there's my reading update. There's your reading update. While wow, we're really flying through this episode, yeah, right you now. only bought one book. Sometimes we we're here for like twenty minutes with the hauls, but not today. <laughs> <Tell y 'all. laughs> not today. Not today, well, folks. Let's jump into a really quick edition of book news. <laughs> All right, so this book news really truly is going to be just one line short because we're mainly going to be doing Raylene's quiz. Oh, hell yeah. The only thing I need to do on quiz on book news is it's not even a correction. It's just an <laughs> update. It's like an update on what we talked about in the last book news. So a couple of weeks ago, Raylene saw news and it isn't your fault because the Book Riot <laughs> article did just come out. Exactly. So I didn't like investigate kinda, any further. <laughs> but it's kind of confusing. So on February 9th, 2023, so yeah. um, less than a month ago, um, they posted, Book, Book Riot posted this article that says, that starts, Twilight fans rejoice. Stephanie Meyer has announced that two new Twilight books will be released. So it really sounded like it was new news. Oh, right? yeah. Big time. Um, and then also in style posted their thing on February 7th, 2023. Yeah. So I don't, I find it so confusing that this is the situation because when you go to the in style one, which is what the book riot one will link to. Yeah. The in style one links to an article from USA Today. Cool. If you click through to the USA Today one, <laughs> that one came out in 2020 yeah you just have to keep following so, the train back but i don't know why they have done this, these new articles for something I that's know, not it's so new odd news. as if there was new information or something but no new information was given yeah so basically we got a bunch of people that were like this is actually really old news and we we're like <laughs> nope you're right <laughs> you're absolutely not right i'm just so out of the loop and it's funny because i may have even seen those articles in 2020 and just forgot because nothing happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have. Like, it's yeah. highly possible that I knew about it once. Yeah. And then got we amnesia. also got some people telling us that Christine from Poland Bananas Books, fellow, uh, fellow YouTube pal, that she did a lot of the, like, this news. And, like, I think it was her that was interviewing Stephanie Meyer yeah, and actually so. asked some follow-up questions. So... Anyway, we're just <laughs> updating you all that it turns out this isn't as juicy as we were excited to announce. Yeah. But next time there is real news, I'm sure the people will tell us now. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. They'll be like, this is real. This we'll, is be, real. we'll be on the hot news, finally. <laughs> um, okay, this is a really random little thing I'm going to mention right now. I just cut out of nowhere. Okay, this water bottle, Raylene, this is like a classic <laughs> Nalgene bottle. I feel like a lot of people have these. Uh -huh. I got um, a couple of people DMing me asking, where did I find one that had a straw top? 
because cool. no one's ever seen one that has a straw top and i was like i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna i'm gonna help the people out and let you all know i just drilled a <gasps> hole into the top of it i was wondering i was like that seems like a crazy design for a water bottle like i've never seen something like that <laughs> it's an aerial beset design <laughs> <laughs> she's a lunatic i just I just went out to my back room, got my drill, and like drilled a hole into it. And I was like, wow, that really worked perfectly. And then I um, got a plastic straw, like a reusable straw. Yeah. And put well, it that in the straw like there. goes with it really nice too. Like I know. I, I was so excited when I found a green straw. Mm, oh. That's good. All right. So that answers that question. <laughs> uh, okay. Now it's time. It's time, Raylene. It's time. I'm scared. Let's stop beating around this bush. I'm so I'm scared. I'm so excited to quiz Raylene. Gatsby or no Gatsby? <laughs> Gatsby? What? Gatsby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ahem, okay. Okay, yeah. So all you have to say is if it's from The Great Gatsby or if it's not from The Great Gatsby. Okay. And I can repeat them as many times as well. Okay. Um, do you want me to keep your score or do you want to... You keep them? the score. Okay. Number one. It's a great advantage not to drink among hard drinking people. Ooh. It definitely could be. <laughs> that's something that Nick might think when he's at one of Gatsby's parties, but I don't think that's from The Great Gatsby. I'm going to say no. Unfortunately, that is from The Great Gatsby. <laughs> I knew it. I'm going to get every single one wrong. <laughs> Jordan says that. Oh, okay. Jordan says that. That makes more sense. I'm like, this doesn't feel like Nick. I forgot the other okay, characters. It wasn't second. Nick. It wasn't Nick. Yeah. Okay. Here's one. New friends can often have a better time together than old friends. I'm going to say, my, my gut says no, but I'm going to say that it is. You should have trusted your gut, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> What's that from? Well, it's from Tender is the Night. I knew you were going to do this to me. I knew you were going to do this to me. I knew that there was going to be some more Fitzgerald in there, and I haven't read any of his other books, so... <laughs> Uh, it did feel okay. like it could be Gatsby-esque. It did feel very Gatsby because it's from F. Scott. Yeah, that makes it's sense. from your man F. Scott. Okay, <clears throat> here's the next one. <laughs> the island is ours. Here, in some way, we are young forever. No. Correct. That is from We Were Liars by <laughs> E. Lockhart. Can you imagine if I said yes to that? <gasps> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's downright hilarious. The only reason I, yeah, I, there's like, they never talk about being on an island, so. They would say West like Egg, Manhattan, if anything. Manhattan is an island. That was, a, okay. that was a good trick, though. Okay. <laughs> you tried to trick you. Okay, the next one. The loneliest moment in someone's life is when they are watching their whole world fall apart and all they can do is stare blankly. That's not the Great Gatsby. It is the Great Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh no! Oh Ray, 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 Ray. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, I've only read it three times, and I'm not like a scholar of the book, and also I have a terrible memory. <laughs> it's a lot of things working against you. Yeah. Okay. Number five. Number five. In retrospect, I remember feeling somewhat relieved. That the chaos and insanity would finally be behind me. I'm going to say no to that one. Correct. It is not from The Great Gatsby. It's from The Wolf of Wall Street. And I thought that was funny because... That is funny. <laughs> Leo plays both characters. They're all connected in my head, so that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. okay. Quote number six. Quote number six. So we drove on toward death through the cooling twilight. Ooh. I'm going to say yes to that one. Correct. That, that was Nick. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next up. I have only to break into the tightness of a strawberry and I see summer. It's dust and lowering skies. Mm. I'm going to say no to that one. Correct. Okay. That is from The Bluest Eyes by Toni Morrison. Oh, very good. For some reason, the moment you said strawberry, I was like, that word's not in The Great Gatsby. I saw you react to that. You were like, I don't like, know why. why that was just like, there's, there's no way that that's in The Great Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. 
I don't have to listen to rumors about a man when I can judge him for myself. That feels like it could very well be a trick. Because that sounds like someone talking about Gatsby, but what if it's not? Okay, I'm just going to say that it is. You need to trust your gut better, <laughs> man. <laughs> Here's what's hilarious. It could have that's been like just... double tricking me, though, you know? I know. That's what my hope was. I was trying to triple trick you. <laughs> that was a Stephen King quote. Can I Isn't hear the quote fun? again? Yeah. I don't have to listen to rumors about a man when I can judge him for myself. It's from Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. Like, I was just going to say, I have no idea what that's from. It's been a long yeah. time since I read that. <laughs> All right. Number nine. Number nine. I've been drunk for about a week now, and I thought it might sober me up to sit in a library. That is from The Great Gatsby. Okay. You knew that quote? Easy peasy. Right. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that quote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And number 10, really, it's like, I really relate to that quote. Um, <laughs> number 10, final quote, final quote. <clears throat> okay. Perhaps one did not want to be loved so much as to be understood. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't surprise that me anymore. is from 1984. Oh! Double I, so much, I was like, I'm going to get an Orwell quote in here. Because you did a Gatsby quote, right? Yeah, I did. Me. I did. I, I was did. like, I'm going to do an Orwell quote. And it was so fun scrolling through being like, which one of these could sound like well, it was maybe exactly. possibly That's in the, the Great thing. Gatsby? That's the thing. When you curate these quizzes, it's very fun to like try and trick someone. It just didn't yeah. work for me. But like, you did a really good job. Triple trick. So how Triple many trick, quotes were man. actually from Gatsby out of that whole quiz? One, two, three, four. Four. Four out of the set, four out of the ten. Yeah. Um, wow. I was going to do five and five, but I had so much fun finding <laughs> fake quotes. That yeah. I, <laughs> That's one of my like, favorite things to do as well when I did my Here's quiz. another. Here were two that I really wanted to put in there. Ooh, okay. One was, I'm very good at the past. It's the present I can't understand. I felt like that sounded because, you know, when Gatsby says, can't repeat the past. Yeah. Why, of course you can. <laughs> I thought it sounded like that kind of vibe. I'm very good at the past. It's the present I can't understand. I could imagine Gatsby saying that when he was sad. Yeah. It's from High Fidelity by Nick Hornby. Oh, okay. I'm glad my instinct was to say that wasn't the great Gatsby, though, because it also, it sounds like similar, but not similar enough. Okay. What do you, do you think that this one is Gatsby or not Gatsby? This doesn't count. I began to think vodka was my drink at last. It didn't taste like anything, but it went straight down into my stomach like a sword swallower's sword and made me feel powerful and godlike. Ooh. I don't think That's, so. It's a tricky one, right? It's from the bell jar. Oh, okay. I was like, that just, yeah. it just ever so slightly does sound like something that Nick might think, but it also, like, yeah, my instinct was like, mm, no, I don't think so. Well, you got five out of ten, so you got 50%. Hey, that's actually pretty good. I thought I got, like, two. <laughs> no! And and you guessed on the first one, You even though you got it wrong, you did guess that it wasn't something Nick would say, and it wasn't. It was Jordan. That's so true. So I'll give you a point five for that. So Ooh. now you have 55%, and you pass. <laughs> Yay! <Woo -hoo! laughs> oh, that was fun. I feel like I could definitely do it again, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, so like maybe 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 we could do something like this again sometime. I like being the subject of a game. It's fun. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Usually you're the host of the game. Yeah. Um, that was actually I I actually guys you I had so much fun putting that together. So, um, I really recommend that if you have a buddy out there who has a really <laughs> favorite book, try and trick them because you suddenly I was like typing in like literary quotes about drinking. Yeah, I literary figured I was I, I saw that coming accidents. when I heard the quote. <laughs> It's like Literary yeah, quotes about, about parties. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's and tough. I also was like, I need a Stephen King quote because I that would that be you funny. That. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this episode, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Before we go, I did want to mention one quick thing, and it was just to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Because Raylene, we just passed four thousand subscribers. Over oh my god! I know. Thank That's you. Crazy. That's awesome. It's wild. So uh, welcome to all of you. And mm -hmm. we're really glad you're enjoying the video episodes because while they're, you know, they're an added element of work from, we used to not 
wear nice clothes when we recorded these episodes. <laughs> I would have no hair and sweatpants uh, yeah. only. <laughs> we used to be a much more casual affair. Um, we know that it, a lot of you guys are really enjoying them, so it really makes it all worth it. So we're really glad you're enjoying that. Thanks for everyone there. Um, also, I did want to read out that comment that you sent me, really, because we got this really funny comment. Maybe we need to start shouting out a couple of comments. That's a good idea. But uh, Kristen left this comment that says, I've never left a review for a podcast before, but now I really want to add just two golden walnuts away from perfection for potential <laughs> listeners. So that was a really good start. To Valley I love that so much. That's awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. We're going to go record our Patreon mini podcast movie tub where we talk about shows and movies that we've been watching recently. Mm. If you want to check that out, it's at patreon.com forward slash books unbound. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.